For lab 11, we have three things we need to do. We need to build our circuit in multi-sim. We then need to code our circuit in Verilog. And then we're also going to compare the model sim waveform results with our multi-sim results. And then we will include all of these things in our lab report. So looking at the circuit that we are given, we can see that we have a R and an S as our inputs. This first one right here is going to act as the R and this second one right here is going to act as the S. Now we're going to build both of our circuits. I've just gotten the input DIP switch and the pull down resistors and output LED bar with the LED current limiting resistors from a previous lab. I just copied them over here, but I didn't copy the gates. To get the gates, we're just going to hover over place TTL and then we can see that we have all these different components. We're going to type in the gate code for a NOR gate. This can be found by Googling it or whatever. And the gate code is 7402. So we can double click this and we will click new A. And this gives us a NOR gate. So we're going to place it right here. Uh, I'll just click cancel from here. And then we're going to click OK to get out of here. Or cancel, sorry. And then exit out of that. We're just going to copy this and then we can place it down here. Now we want a wire to actually connect these. So I'm going to do control shift W and then I'm going to take a wire from here. This is our Q naught output and it's going to go, um, well, our truth table that we're provided has it at the end. So it's going to go right here. So this is our Q naught. And then this is going to be our Q. It's going to go right in front. Now we have R and R, uh, we'll, we'll actually stick with the truth table and we'll make R the second line right here, the second wire. And then we'll make S the first wire. So we'll take this and we will connect it to S, the first wire. So those are our connections. And now we need to take the actual output from our Q naught and connect it to the input of our Q. So we can come down here and we'll place this wire here and then we will just drag this over here. So now we can see that it's connected and we're going to do the same thing for our Q. We are going to take this right here. We're going to come over here and then we can come up like this and now it's connected to our Q. And now we can run this to try and test to see if it is valid. So pressing the green run, we can see that it does this weird stuff and that's because um, it's not going to work in this state. But once we flip it, we'll see that there is no change when we come back to here. So first we are going to try 0, 1. So S is 0 and then our R is 1. If we flick this, we can see that our Q naught is 1 and our Q is 0, exactly how the truth table labeled that out for us. And now we'll flip up our S, we'll flip them both down, and we can see that we have a no change. We're going to flip up our S, and we're going to leave our R down. And we can see here that we have a Q, this wire, outputting a result, it's high, and then our Q naught is low, which means it's off. Now, if they're both high, both inputs R and S are high, we are going to have zero, zero, because there's nothing here. And then if we reset it, we can see it stays at the previous state. So that's it for our multi-sim circuit. We can stop this. And now we want to code in Verilog. So we're just going to pull up Quartus Prime. Once this is pulled up, we can full screen it. And then we are going to make a new project wizard. We're just clicking next past the introduction. And we want to find our working directory. So this can be wherever we choose. Next, we need the name of our actual project. And the name here, I am just going to call it 11, or actually Lab 11. So this is the, what the name is, and we're going to have to stay consistent throughout with that. We're going to click a empty project. We're going to click Next through Add Files. We want to change family to be 4E. And then our name filter, we are going to put this in. And then we are just going to click this. And then we can click next through here. We want to make sure our simulation is model sim. 
our Verlog HDL is selected and then we can click next and then we'll click finish when it comes to summary and then it will load our project. From here we can click the new file. We want a Verlog HDL design so we will click OK to this and now we're going to be inside of here. Now is where we want to write our code. So to start off our code we're going to have module hi and then we want our inputs and outputs listed in here. I'm going to do them all in capital case. So we're going to have S comma R. These are our inputs. Now I'm going to title the outputs Q and then Q not. So these are the outputs right here. We're going to end the line. We're going to come down here and we're going to write our inputs. We're going to specify them as S and R. And then we can end the line. And then we can specify our outputs. In our outputs here are Q and Q not. So we have these and now we need to actually make our gates. If we look at the model sim which I have provided on the right, we can see that all of our wires are actually taken care of. We don't need to specify wires uh, because our inputs are S and R, those inputs are taken care of. And then our output wires are this Q and Q not. So we don't really even need to write our wires. We do however need to make our gates. These are both NOR gates, so we're going to have NOR we are going to have NOR gate 1 and then we are going to have the output for this and the first NOR gate, um, this is the top NOR gate, that's why I called it NOR gate 1 we are going to have the output as Q we are going to have to look at our inputs now so our inputs are going to be the first wire which is R and then our second input wire which we know to be Q not. so we can close this off we're actually going to have a parenthesis right here that way we can come down here and write our next NOR gate. We'll call it NOR gate 2. Our output here is going to be Q naught. We can now deal with the inputs. The inputs are going to be Q and S. And now we can close this off with a semicolon and then we'll come down here and we will end the module. And so this is the code for our two NOR gates. Now we need to make a test bench. So we will click new we're going to click Verlog HDL file and then we're going to click OK. And then in our test bench, we're going to need a module, our name for the test bench, which is the name, hi, and then underscore TB and then parentheses, and then we're going to end this line. We need to specify our inputs, so we're going to do reg and then our inputs, which are R and S. Next, we are going to look at our outputs, which are wire. So we'll have Q and also Q naught. And these are outputs. Now what we're going to do is have the name which is hi and then we're going to have UUT and then we are going to have uh, all of this code. It's a little repetitive so I'll just copy and paste it from where I coded it earlier and it's going to look something like this where we have a dot and then the thing that we're specifying and then parenthesis the thing that we're specifying in parenthesis and then we have a comma and then we're going to do this for everything that's our input and that is our output now we're going to have the initial begin, finish, end, and then end module, which I've coded previously, and I'll just paste in here like this. So our initial begin is kind of like a truth table. We have our RS inputs, and we have the different possible outputs, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then this is for like just displaying. And then we have finish, we have end, and then we have end module. So what we need to do is we need to go back to real log one. We're gonna hover over start compilation, click it, we're going to click yes to this and now we need to name it. So we're in the actual directory and then we are going to keep this the same. This is a lab11.v so we'll click save here and now our verlog2 is actually our test bench so we're going to name it lab11 underscore tb and then we can click save here and now it's going to run some tests to see if our code uh, is able to run. I got some errors and that's because I did not have a semicolon on this line, nor did I have a semicolon on this line. That's very bad. We should have semicolons at the end of lines 3 and lines 4. I have no clue why I wrote hi here um, instead of the actual name or hi tv here. I promise I am not. I am on the ground. But this should be the name of our lab. The name of our lab is lab11, that is our file name. Lastly, we need to replace this high right here, so we will have lab11, 
u u t. So I fixed the semicolons. I fixed the name up here, right here. I fixed the name right here, and then I also fixed the name right here. And now we are going to have to start the compilation again for both of these. We'll click yes to save our changes and then wait for it to compile. Now that that is complete with no errors and no warnings, this is what our code and test bench look like. We're going to go up to tools. We're going to click run simulation tool, click RTL simulation. And then on the bottom, we should have a pop-up where our vSim is going to appear. We need to see our wave. If it's not here, we're going to go to view and make sure wave is selected. And then we are going to click compile. We are going to go up until we are in the directory with our code. We're going to compile the code and then we're going to compile the test bench as well. We'll click done and then we will start our simulation. We'll click work. We'll click the test bench and then we'll click OK. And then we can see that our inputs R and S are up here and then our Q and then the Q not outputs are here. So we will hold control or command and then drag all of these over here. And then we can click the run that's next to 100 PS at the top. We're going to not finish and then it'll bring us back here, but we can easily click back to wave Then we'll click zoom full and then we'll get something like this. Now we can compare these to the truth table that we were given in our lab. So at zero, zero, we're going to be right here. We can see that our inputs are zero and zero. Uh, we don't have anything. We have no change and C and that's what the red is. Next, we are going to change where our, our R is zero and our S is one. So this is the third line of our truth table. Our Q should be one, which it is. And then our Q naught should be zero. So that looks pretty good. Now our R is one and S is zero. And so we are at the second line. And then our Q should be zero and Q naught should be one, which is true. And lastly, if we have one one, our Q and Q naught should be zero zero, which it is. So to demo this lab, we would just display this, show that this all works. Uh, we would also show our code for the test bench and for the uh, lab right here. And then we would also show our multi-sim. So doing all of that, we have completed this lab.